Actually, another um, word that will always come up with Sibelius or metaphor, even whatever way you want to put up description, is nature. Yeah. Now, nature in music, as in nature in anything, is very difficult to define. You can mm. really say it's anything. However, it does seem pertinent to Sibelius, and you know, nature in perhaps in, in the Finnish psyche. We met Maestro Lintu, yeah. Anu Lintu here recently, mm -hmm. and he was very illuminating on this as well. But like the primeval forest in Finnish mythology and folktale is an awe-inspiring place. It's dark, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it has a, a magical grandeur. It's a little bit like Oberon, except it's a much, it seems to be a much darker place, or, mm -hmm. or a much more ambiguous place, mm -hmm. perhaps. That said, this is music, not nature, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, not trees. Do you think there's a, a love of nature or pantheism or pantheism in Sibelius and in this Fifth Symphony in particular? Do you think he's writing stuff like that into it? I am naive enough to think it is. Uh, well, he is talking about it. He's yeah. talking about the swans and everything. Yeah. And he was, I think, I think that he, he, he was a very, very sort of simple person in many ways and that's also why he stopped composing because he he felt that these other composers coming up writing this intellectual music and and uh, doing things that he thought he couldn't do so he just gave up he felt i have nothing new to write and he he went from from complete some days he was euphoric and thought i, I really i really know yeah. i have contact with everything and, and another day he would say, no, all that I wrote is, is complete. And I think that's typical of a great, great artist. That's, yeah. that's him. And, uh, and for sure nature is, plays a role, but he's... But also, also well, there's, there's a problem. There's a problem here. And the problem is, I think, that music itself without words is so superior to the fact that to the words saying that here comes the swans yeah. once you said here comes the swans you took it down to another level whereas of course it's not bad to know it but it's also good to be free from the, that image and just feel the music the music itself, the way it just gets your tears out of, of the... You understand how important mm. this is, this theme. And when it goes into another key, it's like really, it's life and death. Mm. And it's yet so simple. Mm. If you look at the score there, it's so simple. It's two horns, bam, 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 yeah. bam, yeah. bam, bam, and a little bit of strings yeah. that's all what, how can that make music and it makes the most magical music that you can ever think of no i absolutely agree <laughs> with you. it's but when you were saying there about sibelius you know and being a great artist and he was a great composer and one day he's he's a creator he's you know god is throwing down pieces of the mosaic that he's going to assemble into the fifth symphony the sixth symphony whatever the next day he can't write anything because he's, he's he's all the stuff is rubbish say or you mm. know he's going through profound angst if you like or uh, the fourth symphony uh -huh. is full of angst, as we know. Mm -hmm. and he said that beyond it lay chaos and madness. Mm -hmm. Arnold Schoenberg went beyond it, but he used a 12-tone technique to structure his, his voyage mm -hmm. into, and older forms, as we know, to structure these, th these discoveries of maybe darker tonalities. But I'm interested in, uh, Christian, is its relation to the fifth symphony. Now, I, I agree with you. I think the fifth symphony is magnificent. There's a great release in it. There's miraculous passages but is there a sense sometimes do, do you ever think that it could be there could be much more darkness in it than we actually let on do you know what i mean uh -huh, there is, is more darkness than, than we than, than we, our than we make happen in the performance yeah do you think it's oh yeah 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 i mean i mean there's a lot of comp a lot of performances that are not not for instance the beginning like it's for me, I think many times I hear the symphony, I hear far too loose rhythms. 
you know, you have these strings, and and people want to want to, as you said, make it like, oh, it's so beautiful nature. It's not. It's like heavy grounded, and it's it's got it's got. Oof. And when the trumpet, bam, ba, 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 it's, it's everything in mm. it, absolutely. And the last chords, because mm -hmm. it, these are magnificent. Oh, you know? yeah. And in some, some people have described, described them as a hard-won amen, almost, like a, you know, a, yeah. a reaching to the light uh -huh. after, after the journey through some of the darkness. Yeah. I remember reading about Carrion looking over a bridge it, somewhere, I think, not so much in Finland, I think he was in his native Austria, and trying to fix this image of water r rushing over rocks and stuff into his mind so that the next time he conducted with the Berlin Philharmonic or Vienna or whoever, he could, because he always felt he hadn't quite got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a great civilian conductor, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 too. But too much sport cars. <laughs> that's, yeah, too many sports cars. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe, maybe it's not so easy to grasp that no. kind of thing yeah. if you if you if you are a person who, whose greatest goal in life is to be uh, the greatest maybe then it's difficult to reach it yeah, yeah. you have to reach you have to reach ground you have to be maybe you also you have to be scandinavian you don't know i don't know i mean mm. i mean he sibelius he beat his wife even it's mm. it's it's uh, it's just nature he is nature and to and to Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I agree absolutely. It's, it's very important to to. It is it is probably darker than it's usually. We're getting away from the dark, okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> good. 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 Yes. Um, can I ask you? I know you're obsessed with music. Uh, music yeah, is, and that's quite obvious, anyway. <laughs> but, uh, so what do you do when you don't have a trombone or a baton or a score in your hand and uh, nowhere near an iPod now or anything uh, like that. Okay, okay, what do I do? To relax basically, or is there anything else in your life? I don't mean to be too personal. I mean, oh yeah, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, at the moment, there is very, very little free time because I'm learning scores and I want to learn them by memory. I want to, so, so little time for relaxation. But I have a lot of lot of things that I love. I love to read. I read all the Strindberg's work from from first word to the last. Oh, Strindberg! That's yeah. and that's nice and <laughs> light. You know. oh. No darkness in there. <laughs> no, you know, for me, for me, it's light. It's the ultimate light. It's finding the, it's finding the light through it. No, and, oh, he's and great. Uh, he's a great writer. Oh, fantastic. And well, I love humor. I love Ricky Gervais, of course. I see, I see The He's Office a lot, and uh, I play a little bit of basketball. I run marathons. Okay. So, Good so I have have a, a lot of things that I enjoy, and I enjoy enjoy meeting people a lot, and having fun, and just be just be relaxed with with friendly people who has great sense of humor and make humor and make crazy things maybe go out very very late in the evenings and you know when you're in china you you go you go to very strange places and it's it's very exciting mm. <laughs> and, I've, and fashion is a thing for you i mean you know i know you like clothes but on a serious note you have a um I want, this is going to sound i have to write, find the right word mm -hmm. here a, th a theatrical, in the best sense, oh, a yeah. dramatic flair, if you like, mm -hmm. um, and you often bring that to, to the stage, you know, in performance. Yeah. Is this to help our audiences relax a little bit? It's like you know, it's not life and death, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's important, Absolutely, but it's yeah. not life and death. I took I took a very clear decision actually, uh, with the help of of one of my best friends, who is a, a research he was a researcher on brain and and very extremely intellectual man. But very ordinary when it comes to listening to music. And he said to me, come on, Christian, classical music, why the hell should I take the interest with classical music? I, I just feel inferiated. What do you, in, inferior. inferior. Yeah, yeah, you just feel inferior. They look so serious and they look down on you as if you, they, with these tales, as if you don't understand anything. But what, it's, what is there to understand? I mean, 
they're just human beings. I mean, I am a brain. I know everything about the brain, but I don't, might not know the notes or so. But it looks so serious as if they don't want to be part of me. So he said, why do you have that stupid tails? And I said, well, well, it's, if I take that away, I said, it's, it's going to be a lot of people, are, it's, it's in my contract, I said. Mm. Well, I'll try it. And I tried it on this, I, I was soloist on, on uh, the 75th anniversary of uh, BBC Symphony. It was a live concert. And I decided to change, throw the tails away. I had just a shirt and leather, leather pants and, and very sort of chic boots. And before I went on stage, you know, all the orchestra were looking at me. Well, what, what, is, what is he going to do? My God, what is he going to do? What? What is this? You, you have tails there. No, no, I thought this. And they were looking like this. And, but the funny thing is, when I came on stage, I've never had entering the stage such an ovation. You know, they were just, wow, liberated. Simple, liberating, and I played, and stole the show. And afterwards, uh, uh, Paul Hughes, the, the manager, ended his speech to the orchestra by saying, "And by the way, we have something to learn about dressing codes from our Swedish friend." <laughs> so it's it's I think it's something that I thought a lot about, and uh, it meant much more than I could ever imagine to the to the to the contact with the audience so that's why i do it <laughs> also it's much more comfortable <laughs> to just have a shirt and trousers <laughs> well that's great thank yeah. you very much Christian. okay great thanks